most pressing challenge for urban informal workers is that they are not recognized as legitimate actors. There are dominant narratives that say they are illegal, they're criminal, they have low productivity, they're a drag on the economy. And these dominant narratives are then reflected in the city's policies and plans and practices, making it very difficult for them to earn an honest living in a very harsh regulatory environment. Well, what we know is key is that there should first be a participatory process in which the organizations of the workers have a voice and a say. And that could lead to then the policies and practices uh, that would support them. And in general, uh, one way to think about what they need is that they need access to public space to pursue their livelihoods. They need access to public services, particularly basic infrastructure, transport services at their workplace. And then they would like access to public procurement when the government puts out bids for goods and services, they would like to be able to compete. In Durban, South Africa, there was a project to uh, revive a precinct on the edge of the central business district where there was a natural market of about 8,000 vendors. And the city had a program to build infrastructure, shelter, and otherwise support the workers. And this work has been continued by an NGO uh, formed by city officials to continue the work. In uh, Bhubaneswar, India, uh, there are vending zones for street vendors. In Bogota, Colombia, the city has issued a contract to the Association of Waste Pickers to collect and transport and recycle waste. In Pune, India, the city has also given a contract to waste pickers. So there are good practice examples in many cities. Well, if you think of income equality or income inequality, what we know is that over half of the urban workforce globally is in the informal economy. And to make the city more equal in terms of incomes, the livelihoods, the ways these workers earn their livelihoods have to be enabled and supported by the city. We also know that these workers contribute to the economy of the city so that um, the economy itself will flourish, not just um, the informal workers themselves. We know that these workers contribute to the uh, local economy. Most construction workers who build roads and buildings are informal. Most people in manufacturing, manufacturing goods, are hired informally or are self-employed. Um, trade, the distribution of goods and services, particularly the last mile, is mainly done by informal traders. There's a study that shows that 70% of households in sub-Saharan Africa buy food from informal markets and street vendors. Uh, the waste pickers are cleaning the streets. They're saving waste from going to landfills or incinerators, which contributes to carbon emissions. So they're helping the city. They're also helping uh, in terms of environmental sustainability. And we believe that informal workers in general have a, have a smaller carbon footprint um, than the formal enterprises and workers in the same sectors.